Good day. Today I'm going to talk about lower urinary tract pathology, but this is uh, one of the series that I'm going to narrate. So I'm going to divide my lecture into a few uh, series. So here goes. Okay, uh, in this lecture I'm going to talk about the pathology of the within the ureter. Number one, the, there is a, we go for the congenital anomalies first. So, uh, for this one, we go for the double and bifid ureter. And usually, uh, a double or bifid ureter is, has no clinical significance because patient can live life as it is. Uh, there won't be any um, uh, uh, symptoms or sign or any, uh, problems regarding this kind of uh, uh, conditions. And usually uh, occur mostly uh, unilateral, mean one side, just one side of the um, uh, of the genital urinary system. For, uh, so we can see there's uh, some variations here in 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 this first one. You can see the uh, the ureter had been separated into three small tubes. Uh, it's extending from the renal pelvis here, and you can see it enters the um, enters the urinary bladder uh, into three small openings there. But in this case, in this uh, second one, you can see uh, it enters the urinary bladder in, with, with two small openings here. But from the pe uh, renal pelvis, one of the ureter uh, has, uh, uh, is bifid at the renal pelvis here. So there are some variations here. For example, in this case, uh, you can see the, the ureter is separated into three small uh, tubes and then it's merged together again, uh, just far away from the kidney. And then it's entered the urinary bladder with one uh, small openings. And then uh, in this case, the, there is two, um, two um, small tubes, two small ureter coming out from the renal pelvis and it enters the uh, uh, urinary bladder with three small opening where one of it or one of the urinary bladder is um, uh, how do you say one of the urinary bladder uh, become bifid just before entering the urinary bladder okay next we go for the congenital anomalies we are the urethral pelvic junction obstruction so urethral pelvic junction obstruction is uh, anomalies that can that occur uh, um, just after the, uh, the the renal pelvis converge or becoming the ureter. So then there will be some uh, constriction or obstruction that can be caused there. So congenitally, it can be caused by a few causes, uh, and it is this condition is a common cause for hydronephrosis so if your patient presented with hydronephrosis then you can have a look and uh, do K KUB x-ray uh, with contrast and you can see the hydronephrosis in this kind of patients and if the, the lesion or condition uh, present uh, uh, occur in bilateral of the kidneys or bilateral ureter the patient can present it early so meaning during childhood, this child can present it with a lot of uh, problems, for example, like uh, urinary tract infection, recurrent urinary, urinary, urinary tract infections. So it, he, uh, the child can present it early. Usually 20% of the cases occur in bilaterally. And this condition is usually associated with contralateral kidney agencies, meaning the, the the other side of the kidney, the contra, contra side of the kidney is not developed well. So you can see the kidney become very small and sometimes poorly developed kind of kidney. So there will be some contralateral kidney agencies in these patients. So in, if this uh, is the condition, then you need to find out and, and identify this patient early so that we can correct the uh, urethral pelvic junction obstruction so that this patient we can preserve the the normal kidney uh, from being uh, scarred and from being affected by the conditions and for the pathogenesis it is can caused by either 
abnormal smooth muscle organizations, excess collagen deposition of restroma, or it can cause by extrinsic compression by renal vessels. And all of these are usually uh, due to congenital anomalies or some anomalies in between uh, patient, uh, patient or person to persons. So some person will have these kind of uh, lesions and these lesions which, which what cause urethropelvic junction obstructions. Next is the diverticular disease or diverticular problem of the ureter. So diverticular is uh, just an outpouching or secular outpouching of, of the uh, ureter wall. So you can see in this diagram that I draw, you can see this, this is the diverticular, diverticulum. It's, so it can be congenital or acquired and usually patient is asymptomatic but however there is an increased risk to recurrent urinary, urinary tract infection because of urinary stasis that can develop within this diverticulum so it means the urine will become stasis and does not uh, go downwards or uh, towards the urinary bladder so what happens uh, how does uh, this patient is at risk in developing uh, urinary tract infection this is because in the bladder here is usually there will be some bacterial colonies um, growing inside the urinary bladder and this um, bacterial colony can grow upwards and going towards the upper urinary tracts and if when when this bacterial colony arises at this diverticulum it will be stuck here because of the urinary stasis and we continue to grow inside this diverticulum uh, in normal conditions the urine will be flushed during our uh, urinations and all these bacteria will be, will be flushed out but in this case when there is a urinary stasis at the diverticulum the bacteria will see that here and continue to grow within this diverticulum so this is what causes uh, urinary tract infection in this kind of patients however sometimes because of the diverticulum is small enough then it will be flushed together with the urine so they, the, the patient will be presented as um, a, with any kind of uh, symptoms uh, again i just wanted to stress that it can be congenital due to the anomalies of the musculature layers within the uh, development within the ureter that causes this diverticulum or it can be acquired due to injury due to stones or uh, traumatic or sometimes uh, some operations uh, surgical interventions that have been done and cause injury towards this ureter and this is what cause uh, predispose the ureter to to develop uh, diverticulum Next is the congenital anomalies with vesicle urethral reflux. So in this condition, you can uh, in this condition you, can, you will see the urine will causing will be backflow from the urinary bladder and it goes upwards into the ureter and sometimes into the pelvic calicial systems. So to understand this, you need to understand the pathogenesis of it. So for the pathogenesis of this vesicle urethral reflux, it is due to incompetent vesicle urethral valve. So you need to understand that in a, a, a normal anatomy of the urinary, uh, lower urinary tract, uh, lower urinary tracts, there will, uh, in the bladder, there will be a valve, what which we call we call it as vesico urethral valve so it control the the flow of the urine to keep it one way means it, the urine will be flow from the kidney into the urethra and into the urinary bladder and then outward into the ure urethra but due to the defect in this uh, in, in the vesico urethral valve the urine during the, the, the act of um, urinations, apart from the urine 
coming out through, through the urethra, some of the urine will be backflow into the ureter and up into the um, the kidneys or the uh, the pelvic calicial system. So these conditions is what causing the uh, vesicular urethral reflux. Okay. Um, so due to the defect of this uh, uh, vesicular urethral reflux, uh, sorry, the vesicular urethral valve, it causes the vesicular urethral reflux and it will cause the backflow of the urine. And it based, depends on the severity of the uh, incompetency of the valve. So it will, it will show the dilatation, it will cause the dilatation of the urethra or the renal pelvis. Uh, or, or the renal pelvis. So if the, 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 the incompetency is severe enough, they will, uh, the, 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 apart from the urethra, ureter, the pelvic calicial system of the kidney also will become dilated. This is due to the, the increase in the pressure due to the backflow of the urine coming from the urinary bladder. So this is what caused the, uh, the the pelvic calcium system and also the ureter become dilated. So, what will happen in this uh, condition is this: the patient will be at risk in developing urinary tract infections. So why? Because normally we need to flush out all of the urine through the urethra because some of the bacteria can can crawl up from the, the outer surface of our the genitalia and into the urethra and can sit within the urinary bladder. But uh, in this condition, uh, sorry, in the normal conditions, the, the all of the urine which contains some amount of the bacteria colonies will be, will be flushed out and uh, removed from our body. But in this case, uh, apart from the urine coming out from the urethra because of the but because of the uh, incompetency of the valve, some of the urine that contains bacterial colonies will be also bring, will be flushed upwards into the urethra and sometimes into the pelvic calcium system. And these uh, bacterial colonies will grow, subsequently grow within this, within the ureter and also pelvic, pelvic calcium systems and cause urinary tract infections. And you can see these conditions in 1 to 2% of children. So when you are practicing your medicine afterwards, if you find out that this what the children that come to you have presented with recurrent uh, urinary tract infection, you need to find out the vesicle, uh, either this patient is having vesicular urinary reflux. So you need to do maybe a KUB ultrasound or you can you need you can do the uh, KUB x-ray with uh, contrast to evaluate the patient's uh, ureter. So you need to uh, rule out these uh, conditions because uh, if it is not left untreated, uh, this will cause, um, will cause uh, renal damage and patient can can suffer from, from uh, end stage renal failure and need dialysis afterwards if it is uncorrected. But uh, if it is corrected well, then this patient can live as a normal life afterwards. And for the adult, sometimes this condition can, uh, can be acquired. For, for example, in patient with spinal cord injury, uh, in this kind of patient, they will have a persistent bladder atony where the, urin the, 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 the urinary bladder become very lax or very relaxed. It's not contracted. So this vesicular urethral valve become incompetent and become dilated and this will also cause vesicular urethral reflux and uh, further uh, predispose the patient for, to the urinary tract infection. So in this kind of patient, you also need to find out the condition these conditions next is the obstructive lesions of the ureter so it can be caused by a few causes that which i will explain later but uh, for the presentation it can be uh, presented as ureteral dilation dilatations so 
stones or any kind of obstruction can obstruct the urethra at any sites but the most common sites to be obstructed is at the um, just before the ureter enter the uh, urinary bladder so for example if there is obstruction there you can see the uh, ureter become dilated in some cases it just the ureter become dilated in this case we call it as hydro ureter so within the the ureter is just a fluid or urine inside the uh, ureter and sometimes because if it is severe enough or in long standing cases the there, there will be also dilate, dilatations of the renal pelvic calicious system so apart from the ureter become dilated the renal pelvis also become dilated but in this case still the the content of this um, uh, within this ureter and the renal pelvis is the urine so in this case so we call it as hydronephrosis but in a long standing in long long standing or in a patient with a uh, risk at, uh, of uh, contracting uh, infections so there will, uh, if the bacteria is grow within the obstructed ureter and also obstructed uh, uh, lower urinary tract systems so this is this what will cause this what will cause it to develop uh, pus within the ureter and also renal pelvis like in this picture so in this case it already turned becoming into pyelonephritis so if, if it is stated that it is a pylo means there is a pus in the renal pelvis and also ureter so the causes for obstructive um, lesions in the um, in a uh, in the ureter can be caused by it can be divided into two types number one is intrinsic number two is extrinsic for the intrinsic causes of um, ureter obstructions intrinsic means the lesions or the conditions that causing the obstruction is within the ureter itself so what can cause it is number one calculi the most common is calculi number two is strictures which can cause by uh, either congenitals or acquired due to trauma or something next is tumor that arising from the ureter itself blood clots if there is a patient or a person who had previous history of renal stone that causing trauma or causing uh, bleeding within the ureter and this blood become blood clots and obstructed the ureter and the last one is neurogenic mean uh, there is a very constricted uh, urinary bladder that causing the urine flow from the uh, ureter into the bladder become obstructed this, and this caused by uh, two constricted urinary bladder which close the vesicular ureter valve tightly and this um, this is what caused the obstruction next is the extrinsic cause for uh, obstruction extrinsic causes mean the external 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 lesions that cause obstruction into the ureter so it can be caused by pregnancy periuteral infl inflammation endometriosis and also tumor so pregnancy of course you know uh, when the uterus become enlarged it can impinge the ureter and cause um, obstruction to the ureter next is the periurethral inflammation if there is an inflammation due to some sorts uh, bacterial peritonitis that can cause inflammation in the surrounding tissue of the periurethra and this also will become the tissue become edematous and also then obstructed the ureter Next is the endometriosis, which are common in the ladies, where the endometriosis can be anywhere. And some of it, if it is uh, unfortunate enough, it lands or it seats near the ureter and it can, can cause obstruction, external uh, compression to the ureter. And apart from that, tumor, for example, benign tumor of the uterus, uh, leomyoma, if it is uh, big enough, it can compress and uh, impinge the ureter and cause obstruction next tumor tumor is uh, a condition that uh, rarely occur 
in the ureter itself. But sometimes we can see a few types of tumor that can occur. I will give you a few example, but this is just uh, very, very rare to occur or to be arising, to be seen arising uh, within the ureter, but it can occur there. Number one is the benign tumor or benign neoplasm, uh, usually caused by mesenchymal tumor or sometimes we call it fibroepithelial polyps. And number two is the malignant tumor. The most common malignant tumor that can occur in the ureter is arising from the epithelial type of um, tumor, which is the urotelial carcinoma or you can say transitional cell carcinoma. The features of this tumor uh, that occur in the ureter is almost the same as its counterparts that occur in uh, other type of um, organs. For example, in ureteral carcinoma, the features is also almost the same what, in what uh, ureteral carcinoma that you see in the kidney or in the urinary bladder. And uh, for this uh, ureteral carcinoma, I will talk later in uh, other series uh, that will uh, come after this. By that, thank you and have a nice day.